try to do a THR. So this is a 58-year-old uh, lady uh, who had pain in both her hips. She was uh, wheelchair-bound, not able to walk, difficulty in walking and in activities of daily living. And she had worsening of symptoms uh, since last three years and was not able to walk at all. On examination, she had uh, severe tenderness uh, on both the hips. Uh, range of movements were uh, grossly restricted, hardly any jog of movement. And she was unable to walk even a few steps while her spine was normal. So this is her uh, preoperative uh, AP X-ray. This shows uh, severely affected uh, both the hips and uh, with uh, protrusio. All right, Dr. Uh, Tapasi, do you have any uh, questions or? I think it's always useful to have a good lateral film as well because uh, we want to study what's happening with the socket. We can see that there's destruction of both the hips and the femoral head is destroyed. There is some protrusion happening on both sides. So we need to look at uh, whether she's got inflammatory arthritis. That's one. Uh, second, we need to have some estimation. She's been in a wheelchair for a long time. So her bone density is going to be suspect. So you need some estimation on her metabolic profile as well to check what for the bone quality we're looking at. And uh, of course, I would not hesitate to get a CAT scan done because I would like to see how the socket looks. Right, who's getting a CAT scan? Now we have one. <laughs> All right. Uh, no, I agree. I think, you know, has this patient been uh, worked up rheumatologically? Yeah. So everything else was normal. Uh, she had uh, rheumatoid uh, arthritis. That she had uh, uh, rheumatoid which was positive, and uh, uh, all her uh, inflammatory markers were also positive, ESR, CRP. Okay. And, yeah. So we don't proceed with any rheumatoid any further without taking these flexion extension views of the cervical spine and the rest of the spine. That, again, can be yeah. disastrous. Such severe rheumatoid arthritis must take look, look at the neck and get the x-rays done. Yeah. And is she on? Um DMARDs or? Yeah, she's on DMARDs and uh, methotrexate, uh, 15 milligram was going on every week, uh, once a week, with uh, other DMARDs uh, going on. So just to emphasize to the audience, the point of all this discussion is just that when you see bad protrusio, especially bilaterally, um, think about what the etiology is, right? So there's inflammatory arthritis, metabolic bone problems, and sometimes other things like Marfan's and things like that. But the bottom line is that the, you should be able, in most cases, to figure out a reason why it's there. It doesn't always matter, but it may matter in terms of the rest of the workup. Marfans, you may want to work up the heart. RA, you may want to work up the C-spine, et cetera. And metabolic bone, obviously, you want to correct any metabolic bone problems before you do the surgery. All excellent points. OK, so show us what you did. <clears throat> so this, this was her uh, lateral x-rays for both the hips. Uh, you can see there are a lot of uh, periarticular cysts, and the bones are very, very osteoporotic. We got her BMD DEXA scan also done, uh, which was showing uh, osteoporosis, uh, severe osteoporosis. And uh, she was on. You, you needed a, a DEXA scan to tell you that? No, we uh, just did to uh, quantify. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, so, what, so what's, what's going on now? You get an outbreak? Yeah, so we planned our uh, surgery for both the hips uh, simultaneously on the same day. Wow. And uh, we did a bilateral total hip replacement. Uh, with uh, impaction bone grafting from the head, and that's uh, what we did. Just one, one comment. I mean, so, I mean, she definitely she has uncontrolled RA, elevated markers, severe tenderness. You know, the tenderness. Maybe I would say that you know, those patients usually have anemia of chronic disease. I assume her hemoglobin was probably less than 12. Yeah. Maybe it was 10. Right? What do you know? What it was? Yeah, it was around 11. So 11.2. 11. 11. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so bilateral total hips. I don't know what your threshold is. I mean, but that's a big hit, right? From a blood loss standpoint, in a, in a rheumatoid with inflammatory markers that are elevated. Um, so, was there a consideration or talk like anesthesia consult, medical consult? Yeah. So, and when was the decision made to abort the second side if there was significant blood loss and other trans, you know, other things happening intraoperatively? So we uh, did her complete workup. We got a fitness done, and uh, intraoperatively, we, once we finished the first side, we calculated all her blood loss. Okay. And after consulting with the anesthetist, uh, we had a decision that we can proceed with the second uh, hip, and we, we could do it without any complications. What was her hip flexion contracture? Uh, flexion contracture uh, was not much, since, since under anesthesia she was uh, relaxed and it was pretty good. Yeah, so that's you know, I was going to give you a break if she had severe bilateral hip flexion contractures. It's hard to do one leg and not, you know, not do the other. But if she was flexible and came out straight, you one at a time, man. That's the right answer. Did you consider to cement the stems? I mean, she had a 
huge osteoporosis. Yeah. So we had kept everything ready, but uh, on table, I, we got a very good fit of the stem, and we were very happy with uncemented stems. And since uh, we used a collared stem, it was pretty uh, good, and the scratch fit of the, uh, of the brooch was very good. So that's why we went ahead with the uncemented stem. Yeah. The one thing just maybe to emphasize to the audience here is that when you're doing the patient who has protrusio, how you ream the acetabulum really matters. That's the whole game. And so the trick is that you start not with a tiny, well, you can use a small reamer to freshen up the bottom of the acetabulum, but once you've done that, then you start with a medium-sized reamer, and then you only put it in as far as the introitus of the acetabulum. Don't keep putting it in deeper. Yeah. Because what you want to do is turn the acetabulum from something that is basically concave into something which is basically convex, if you will. So you want it to be in-sloping everywhere on the rim, and then all you do is hang up the cup on the rim, use the autogenous bone in a, can in a cancellous form to graft the medial defect, and it turns into a relatively straightforward operation if you ream the acetabulum correctly. If you don't ream the acetabulum correctly, all of a sudden it's a hard operation. The cups, look, the cups look perfect here. Did you do great, this great, by great, just right. direct anterior? No, I did the posterior. All right, would we see the trochanteric avulsion on the right side? No, I don't think so. So maybe that's an artifact. So there was no trochanteric avulsion uh, actually. It's just an artifact. <coughs> Any question? Any other comments? Question? Yes. Go ahead. Uh, the question to Professor Mahotra, in such sort of protrusive cases, <coughs> it's not uh, better to give a sandwich technique which you do, put a graft, put the cement and put the graft. It, this gives a very strong floor for the protrusio. I want to comment. It all depends on the severity and magnitude. This uh, medial bone is not deficient. It's thinned out. So I think autologous craft is good enough here. And, uh, but I would like to put in a porous metal cup. I, if a patient can afford porous metal cup remains the cup of choice because the bed is really not normal. It's compromised bone. Yeah, but I think, you know, Dr. Uh, Barry said it. You take a small reamer to breed the bottom just so you get some bleeding bone there. Uh, and then the, the larger reamer uh, to get a good mouth fit. You, you get a nice donut of good healthy bone around the rim. I've never seen one of these have a problem growing in. Yeah, I, I mean, they grow in really well. I agree. All right, anything else you want to add? I said these are the lateral x-rays uh, which show that the uh, cup placement and the stem placement is good. And this is uh, six weeks post-op and she's walking pretty well. Excellent. Great job.